I love 3D printing and the power it gives people to bring their ideas to life. However, I recognize 3D printing is far from perfect. One of my biggest struggles with 3D printing is when I feel like it adds more wasted plastic to the world. We already have enough of that. And to add to that challenge, when you're designing for 3D printing, you often don't get it right on the first try. That's a completely natural part of the design process. However, when you 3D print a design and it doesn't work, it feels like you're just adding more wasted plastic to the world. I haven't found an easy way to recycle or reuse 3D printed plastic. However, I know there are companies working on this and making it simpler and simpler. Ideally, you would waste less before you print. This is why when I was in Tinkercad the other day and I saw this new feature called SimLabs, I got really excited. Cause I thought now beginners might be able to test out their designs on the computer virtually before actually printing them in the real world. I know more advanced CAD software has simulation features which are amazing and extremely powerful, but there's a steep learning curve for beginners. So I dove into Tinkercad SimLab to see how useful it could be for testing designs before 3D printing and if it could mean less wasted plastic in this world. Let's look at a few of examples where it might be helpful and some examples where it might not be helpful. I often use CAD to see how real world objects will fit into my designs. But can SimLab help me see how designs would behave in the real world where gravity and fiction exist? Here I designed a phone stand and then modeled a basic phone to fit in it. When designing the phone stand, I wanted it to use the least amount of plastic and take the least amount of time to print. All while still functioning, of course. I can go to SimLab up here, which is the falling apple. I can assign a material to my phone and my phone stand. In this case, I'm assigning plastic to both. However, you can change the material to any one of the built-in presets. Wait for all of the objects to be recognized before I hit play and then hit play. Without any back support as suspected, this phone stand is not functional. Ouch, that would be pretty bad for your phone. Now, will SimLab help me answer the question of how much support do I need? Well, let me try add the shortest amount of support I think will work and then slowly go from there to see roughly when it works. So let's hit reset, go back to the design tab and start with the smallest support. Go back to SimLab, see if it works. Ouch, not good. Let's try something longer. Go back to SimLab. All right, pretty good. That might actually work. I recognize this is a rough estimate as the simulation is not exact, as you will see in other examples, but it does help me figure out roughly how long I should make it, saving me from printing versions that would definitely not support my phone, saving me some plastic. For my next test, I found the simulation in some cases are not entirely reliable. Here is a print in place hinge chain. I have successfully 3D printed on my 3D printer and it worked great. However, if I test it in SimLab as is, it acts as if the chain would completely fall apart. If you scrub through to the beginning, for some reason the pieces pop out of each other almost immediately which is not accurate in real life. In fact, if anything, it's impossible to pop them out in real life. However, I found a workaround to test with two links. In this method, you make one of the links static, which means it doesn't move in the simulation and is not affected by gravity. And then, as you can see, it works as it should. In this last example, I just wanted to have fun and see if I could design a virtual car that would work. 
this car actually wouldn't be easily 3D printable because of the design, but I wanted to see if SimLab could handle it. So I designed a car and put it in a ramp, and it worked. So then I added a second car with a link. And this, similar to the hinge, was hard to get right. So in conclusion, I would view Tinkercad SimLab as guidance, not a hard and fast rule. And it can help you catch some more of your basic mistakes before printing. Because I know, I've been 3D printing for a while, but I still make basic mistakes that I'm kicking myself after I print it, thinking, I should have caught that beforehand and I wasted this plastic. And even if SimLab only saves a little plastic, it's still progress. And at the very least, it's super fun to throw random objects at your design and virtually see how it holds up. As Tinkercad SimLabs continues to improve, I hope it will become an even more valuable tool and hopefully help us reduce plastic waste and create more efficient designs. So give it a try and share what you used it for and learned in the comments below. Until next time, take the time to learn and create every day. Mm.